Yes, friends, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Yannick. How's it going, mate? It's been a while. Are you okay? I hope so. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk about all sexy, sexy charges and rule breaking in the world of football. What's going on with Chelsea's allegations? Of course, in the uh, light of these uh, recent stories of Everton getting charged again after their 10 points uh, deduction for, um, you know, profit and sustainability rule breaches. They've got another charge on top of that. And, of course, Forrest have also got a recent charge as well. Um, they are in isolation of recent time periods of how they've been run in terms of making and spending money um, and how they're running the companies, respectively, essentially. So, in isolation, those two clubs, Nottingham Forest and Everton, have been rightly sanctioned for this set period of time and by the way this isn't just some sort of um <clears throat> you know new dictatorship rule from the premier league this is a rule or you know rules that were voted in by the premier league clubs uh, a while ago i believe they sort of thought yeah this is a good way of keeping everyone in check and not having silly spending uh you know this is a reason why newcastle can't buy couldn't buy mbappe when the saudis took over you know it's it's meant to level the playing field a little bit um so that's why the stuff with man city and chelsea is separate but they're both st both stories remain um i wanted to talk about it because people are still talking about chelsea i'm a chelsea fan so i want to talk about that but also the big talking point is Man City's 115 charges um, put to them by the Premier League. There's a guy that went on Talk Sport, a financial expert, incidentally a Man City fan as well. Um, it goes into detail saying if they are found guilty, Manchester City, they will be at least relegated from the Premier League. Who knows, maybe they'll be stripped of their Premier League titles as well. So we're going to talk about both these things in this video today. Um... If you want to support this content, please do consider subscribing to Football Yannick uh, and liking and commenting, etc. So let's start off with the Chelsea. Chelsea. First off, look, so both these cases, the Man City and the Chelsea cases, they're so, so different. Like I said, they're not related to the profit and sustainability rule, um, you know, rules at the moment where everyone's sort of being careful about transfers. The Man City one is for a conspiracy for over a decade of how they've sort of like um, squeezed money into the project uh, illegally, right? And the Chelsea one, the Chelsea one's different because it's not been, Chelsea haven't been charged by anyone. Chelsea haven't done anything like, actually what's happened is the new owners, Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital, they purchased Chelsea uh, when it was seized off Roman Abramovich and sold by the Rain Group, which is the New York-based bank, who sold Chelsea, who uh, was, you know, given the task of selling Chelsea. Um, <clears throat> and they were the ones also that put Man United up for sale and probably got Jim Ratcliffe in. I don't know if in the end they're the one who, they're, who sort of saw the deal uh, over the line. But Chelsea's new owners, Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital, once cleared, once purchased, they spent a lot of time going for everything in Chelsea. Um, very, very data-heavy owners, but also they looked at the books and they found some financial irregularities over you know, the last 15, 20 years. There were some with like player purchases and agent fees, the odd million here and there that have gone. Now, I don't think it's anything in terms of cooking the books, but I think it's more... Um, extracurricular finances going in certain places and also there is potential problems with taxes i believe i believe uh, i'm not entirely sure allegedly speculatively all that kind of stuff um so they saw that when they bought the club and they were like right well we want to be completely kosher here completely clean um let's self-report this so chelsea self-reported to three governing bodies the football association uefa and indeed the Premier League. Now, UEFA went, thanks for telling us, Todd and Clear Lake. Um, cheers, just have, you know, we won't worry about it. Here's an £8 million fine, so we'll sign something here and say, we're, you're cleared. And they went, okay, cool, here's the £8 million quid. See you later, mate. Um, now, the Premier League are conducting their own investigation. Now, uh, Masters, head honcho of the Premier League, recently said in Parliament, I believe he's in Parliament, um, he was speaking about it and he says, yeah, Chelsea self-reported. You'll know in time if we, you know, do something here. Now, Chelsea are hoping because they self-reported and they feel like they've done the right thing. And also that these um, problems or errors were done in the previous regime that they will be um, treated a little bit more favorably. 
they, I don't think, should they find these problems? I don't think Chelsea won't get off scot free. I, just, just because it's the previous owners, um, you know, doesn't mean that Chelsea is an entity in isolation, you know? Okay, so you can. Yeah, you can buy something and oh, it's, it's very, very difficult to find analogies here, but Chelsea exists as its own and is responsible. So it's not like Chelsea could spend, okay, Chelsea could buy Mbappe, Haaland, Bellingham, all the best 10 players in the world and put them into a starting lineup, breach financial fair play, but then actually go, but then sell the club really quickly and the Qataris buy Chelsea. Chelsea's still responsible for what's happened as an entity. And the Qataris can't go, it's not our fault. It was Todd Bowley and Clearlake who's done all these problems. Do you kind of see what I'm saying there? So that's going to take your time to um, to figure out, essentially, what, what's going on. There, pro- there, is a, there is a... Not an understanding, but an idea that because they've come forward and, like, you know, said to... Like, for example, UEFA, right? UEFA just uh, fined Chelsea 8 million quid. Now... We're going to speak about Man City in a moment, but UEFA obviously banned Manchester City from the Champions League from their from their competition for two seasons. Um, after it was, you know, leaked emails from Der Spiegel. Remember the German um, investigative journalism thing when they found all these hacked emails, and this was like part of the great Man City conspiracy about how they've been cooking the books for a decade or whatever. Um, but one of the biggest gripes of UEFA had about Man City was they were just not cooperative. They weren't showing them the books. They weren't responding to them. Uh, and that really ground the gears of uh, UEFA. Now, obviously, Chelsea have done the literal opposite. They haven't, they're not even under investigation. And they went to UEFA. Hey, guys, look, can you look at our books? We think there's something funny here from the previous guy. So UEFA are going to be like, oh, okay, well done. Well done. Like, ruffle the hair of Todd saying, you've done exactly the opposite of what Man City have done. We appreciate that. You know, so this that sort of collaborative, cooperative thing that Chelsea, and that's and that's why UEFA like just sign them off and said, "Don't worry about it, mate. Off you run, <laughs> off you run to your your football club that you're burning to the ground." I jest, of course, but um, so it, that it's very very different. So now it remains the FA and the Premier League. I feel like whatever finding the Premier League has, the FA will follow suit. But that's me being slightly presumptuous so that's different that might take a long long time as will the man city thing so let's talk about man city now man city as they are currently run are doing nothing wrong they are in no danger of profit and sustainability rules they sold Carl palmer to chelsea for 40 million quid pure profit they won the friggin treble um but apparently they earn ridiculous amounts of organic revenue the most in england now more than man united now (laughs) I'm not a financial expert. I'll put that in there, out there. Man City don't have anywhere near the same fans um, as, say, Man United. Man United are just the biggest club in England. Uh, Liverpool are probably the second biggest club in England. Um, I don't know where Man City are now. They're trying to get the new fans in. But I, I don't know any Man City fans. <laughs> I know, like, actually, one uh, one young guy, I think he's, like, 20 years old, um, or t- 20 or 21, he's a chef at a pub, um, he's obviously quite young, so he's adopted Man City, he doesn't even know, like, that much about football, but um, I'm, this is not, a, this is, this is, ha- uh, this is not a dig at Man City, look, they've got their own rich, illustrious history before, before Abu Dhabi and everything, you know, respect, but for me, as someone down south, uh, just outside London, all my mates growing up, I'm 30, about to turn 35, all my mates are Man United fans. And that's that classic joke about all Southerners are Man United fans. So the fact how they just, you just, I don't know where you know, where they're getting all this revenue from. That's my like layman's completely uneducated view. Like how, you know, gr- granted, uh, I, you know, they joke about the empty had. Do they sell out this massive stadium? Do they have enough fans to get in there? I don't, that's, that was an age old joke. I'm assuming they get more fans in there now because they just keep winning. You know, they've got Guardiola, De Bruyne and Trebles now. Like surely fans were coming in eventually. But, um, they just don't have that juice still. And in, uh, on a fleeting tangent, we are going to talk about the charges, but a testament to this is, you know when, like, you support... Say if you're not a Man City supporter, you're a United supporter, or um, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham, you hate certain teams, but no one really hates Man City. And, like, and that's kind of testament to them, like... I don't know, not being this, like, have this aura and this force behind them that repels you. That's when you start to hate a team. 
Um, again, this just sounds like... Uh, I mean, uh, look, mate, I again, I don't have a problem with Man City. I'm a Chelsea fan. I hate Arsenal, Tottenham, Man United. I hate Liverpool. I hate all of them teams. It's part of the theatre of football. I just don't care about Man City. And that kind of is part of my point, really. Uh, point being, so the, the allegations here, um, it all kind of bleeds in together with the UEFA stuff, um, is that they've been... Uh, the conspiracy is that for a decade they've been cooking the books. Essentially, the ownership have been funneling their own money back into the club at um, incorrect values and like overcharging the values to put the money in, um, and uh, they're their own led owned companies, and then lying about it. Look, the 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 Der Spiegel investigation had emails that proved. Um, wrongdoing, but because they were hacked emails, I believe they couldn't be used in court, which is just ridiculous. It's like, look at this guy, he's killed all these people. Did you hack this email? You can't use it. Um, the truth is, the truth is with the Man City thing, there, I can't remember, there's there's one of the officials at Manchester City, and I've, I'm, I'm regurgitating this from uh, the Football Ramble podcast, but I've heard it before. Um, there's an official at Man City that says they would rather spend millions of so-and-so uh, on, on lawyers and um, keep, keep, you know, things in court for years and years and years and bleed the leagues dry rather than, like, you know, essentially accept they're wrong. <clears throat> and the fact how they have unlimited finances, it looks ominous, basically. Um, look, UEFA tried to ban them from their own competition after they saw they'd been doing noughties and they couldn't even do that because of the legal, fi- the sheer financial might of Manchester City that they threw into the courtrooms and the lawyers and stuff. Um, and this is going to be the case with the Premier League. Sadly, uh, and this is kind of what the financial Man City fan expert was alluding to, um, I, you know, he just doesn't think Man City will be in trouble. He says, if they get proven... Uh, to be of um, these charges. He says you can't see anything other than relegation uh, from the Premier League and, and beyond. Maybe they'll get stripped of titles or whatever. But it just seems like too much bother. And that's a really reductive way of looking at it. But it's kind of like the vibe, bro. Like, um, you know, the Premier League will be kept in court by the sheer financial might of the Man City state-owned um bank you know there's just too much they'll just keep funneling money in um and keep dancing around and keep them in court and you know the the admin as well if you relegate man city and what do you do and the problems but it will um it will be like a bad look won't it and then man city will just keep this monopoly on the premier league uh what they're going to win like six of they've won five out of six they're going to win six out of seven premier leagues with just that one uh, Liverpool one in between it's um, and then obviously they've just PSG'd themselves in we Liga in France um, look I love Guardiola I've got nothing against the club itself Man City in terms of even if I don't believe in state ownership um, which is my opinion and not for this video I've got nothing against the Man City fans they're a you know, good bunch of people that have supported their club for a long time I'm talking about the, the fans before the new ownership they don't deserve any, you know, wrongdoing or whatever. I, Kevin De Bruyne is the best player in the Premier League. I love watching him. Yeah, Guardiola is the best manager in the Premier League. It's all great to have in in terms of um, our brand. Um, but if it's been illegally done for the last decade, it's just... <sighs> Look, and as, you know, I, I, let me just have a moment of lucidity here. I am a Chelsea fan. Okay, so Roman Abramovich came in and just bought success uh he wasn't breaking any rules because the rules weren't in yet and actually roman abramovich was one of the biggest advocates for financial fair play to come in and the rich do you know why because he saw the way things were going he saw abu dhabi coming in um as liam twomey of the athletic once put it he wasn't the richest kid in the playground anymore so he's like yeah let's put the rules in i've established myself you know clubs have spent before blackburn have done it you know man united have spent loads of money before um Granted, the Chelsea were the first, like, real financial juicing of the modern era. But yeah, they weren't breaking any rules. They were allowed to do it, so they did it. And ultimately, you know, what Roman Abramovich did for South West London, and again, putting the, a London team on the map, winning European Cups, it was just, it was a good look for certain elements of the economy and, you know, brand London and stuff like that. So there were, there were good things. But you could say the same about Man City to a degree as well. Point being, if there are rules in place... 
and you break those rules uh, and you you know you knowingly do it long term and like i said it's been conspiracy then you should have the book thrown at you but you know if you're trying to throw the book at loads of matrix trained uh, lawyers that are just simply doing the neo dodging then um it's all pretty unsavory but football is these days isn't it Anyway, that's the update. I wanted to talk about it because everyone's talking about, what about Chelsea and Man City? Two very different things. Um, Of course, Chelsea aren't... Chelsea being investigated through allegations and the allegations have been brought on by themselves. Who knows what happened to Chelsea? Chelsea may have the book for any of them as well if they're like, well, you've done this, this and this, we can prove it. You know, don't care about the new owners reporting it. Chelsea remains an entity in isolation. You're going to get... I mean, I can't see Chelsea getting relegated maybe, but Chelsea might get like... A big points deduction and fine. Who knows? Maybe, you know. And then, um, and then Man City would probably just get away with it because of their sheer legal power. <laughs> and you know, there's the cooperative nature of the Chelsea owners. Yeah, here you are, guys. We found irregularities in our books. We want to show it to you. And then you get this. I should have really got that quote from the Man City, uh, Man City um, uh, official. If I find it, I'll pin it in the comments or something. Um, all right. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Hope to see you back here soon. Take care of yourselves and subscribe. Peace.